Hey, what's up everybody and welcome back to another video in this Learn Data Structures by Creating a Flask API series. In this video, we'll learn about binary search trees and make use of binary search trees in our API. And without further ado, let's get started. Now to start, in our project directory, we want to create a file called binarysearchtree.py. And within that file, similar to our linked lists and hash table implementations, we want to create a node class. And the initialization parameters for this class are going to just be self and data. And we'll set self.data equal to data. And within a tree structure, instead of the node only pointing to a next node, it's actually going to point to a left and a right node. And don't worry if you're having a hard time visualizing this, we'll take some time to go over what this looks like in just a second. But for now, just know that an individual node will point to both a left node and a right node. And we're also going to want to create a wrapper class for our binary search tree. And this class will just be initialize with self. And our tree structure will need a root node, which is the top node of the tree. So our root node will have no parent nodes. And again, we're going to go over what this would look like in a visualization soon. And next and most importantly, we're going to want to define our methods for our insertion. And for our insertion methods, we're going to need to write some recursive code. So if you're relatively unfamiliar with the way that recursion works, I have some videos that can help you to visualize recursion, which can be accessed by clicking the link currently displayed on your screen. So to start, we can just define our insert method which is going to take in self and the value that we want to insert. And the first thing we'll want to do is check if our root is none. And if this is the case, this just means that our top node or the first node within our tree structure is none, which means our tree is empty. And if that's the case, we'll just set our root equal to a new node containing our value. And if we go back to our node, we see that when we create a new node and we pass in the data, the left node and the right node are both set to none. So when we add this first node to our tree structure, it's only going to contain a root node and the root node's going to point to none for both its left node and its right node. So it will be a tree structure that only contains one node so far. And that's if we're inserting a value into an empty tree structure. Else, if our tree is not empty, we will need to use a recursive function to insert into our tree. And this is because we'll essentially need to find an empty node to insert our value into. So we haven't yet created this method, but let's just write it out. We'll just call it insert recursive. And the reason we're starting this method with an underscore is because this method should only be used by our insert method. So basically this insert recursive method is a private method that belongs to our insert method. And we're going to pass in the value and the current root. So now we can go ahead and write the code for this method. And the way that a binary search tree works is the node's left subtree, so that is the tree that expands from the node's left node, should only contain values that are less than the node's value. And the tree's right subtree, which is the tree that expands from the node's right node, should only contain values greater than the node's value, which results in the nodes left and right subtrees also being binary search trees. And I know that this is quite difficult to understand with just me describing the way that a binary search tree should look, but just bear with me, we're going to go into more details soon. But with that in mind, if the value passed to our insert recursive method is less than the past nodes data, we're going to insert that value in the past nodes left subtree. So if value is less than node.data, we're going to insert value into nodes left subtree. And if node.left is none, then that means we can just insert the value into node.left. So if node.left 
is none, then node.left will just equal a new node containing our value. Else, if node.left is not none, then that means that node.left contains a node with a value, and that node can also have a left and a right node. So we're going to need to call our recursive function again, because we would want to do the same exact thing for the left node. We would want to make sure our insertion goes into the left subtree of the left node if it's less than the left node, or the right subtree of the left node if it's greater than the left node. So we'll just do self.insert recursive. And again, we'll pass in the value, and this time we would pass in node.left. And that's what we would do if value is less than node.data. But if value is greater than node.data, we would do the same thing, but this time we would do it on node.write. So we can do elif value is greater than node.data. We'll check if node.write is none. And if it is, we'll just set node.write equal to a new node containing our value. Else, once again, we would call our insert recursive function, passing in our value and node.write. And last but not least, else, we would just return. And this is because if the value isn't less than node.data and the value isn't greater than node.data, then that means the value is equal to node.data. So our else would be if the value is equal to node.data. And if the value is equal to node.data, that means that the value is already contained within our tree. And a binary search tree shouldn't have duplicates. So if that is the case, we're going to do nothing here. So now let's take some time to try and visualize what's happening here. Okay, so let's start by visualizing what would happen if we create an instance of our node class. So we can imagine that we create a variable node, and that variable is going to be an instance of a node, and we'll pass in some random data, so let's just say the number 15. And this instantiation is going to look something like this. So we'll have a node here, and it will contain 15. And then we'll have a left and a right left, right, and these will also be nodes, which will contain none. So as you can see here, self.left is going to be none, and self.right is going to be none as well. And then our data, our actual node, is going to be 15. So this is how we can visualize an instance of a node. So let's go ahead and erase this and see what it would look like if we create an instance of an actual binary search tree. So let's say we call our binary search tree BST, and we set it equal to an instance of binary search tree. This is going to give us an empty binary search tree with the root set equal to none. And the root is just the first node within the tree. So a tree might look something like this. This here is our root node. And in our binary search tree, if this root node is empty, then that means that the entire tree is empty. Let's just draw this again. So now that we've created an instance of binary search tree, we have an empty binary search tree here. Now let's say we want to call our insert method and pass in the value 20. We're going to end up here at insert and the value is going to be 20. And if self.root is none, which it is, it's empty, then self.root is going to become a new node with that value 20. So this is going to become 20. And this new node's left and right are both none. So the left is pointing to none and the right is pointing to none as well. And for none, we just won't put anything into the node. And here's our root, left, right. Now let's say we insert another value. And this time we'll insert one. So what's going to happen is we're going to end up here again. And this time our root is not none. So we're going to move on to this recursive insert. So we'll end up here with our value being one and we're going to pass in the root. So our node here is going to be our root, which is 20. And we're going to check if our value one 
is less than our node, which is our root, 20. And if it is, it means that it needs to go into our node's left node. Because as explained before, in a binary search tree, a node's left node has to be less than the node, and the node's right node has to be greater than the node. So if value is less than node.data, so if 1 is less than 20, and if node.left node is none, which it is, then we're just going to insert that 1 into the left node. And then we'll continue with another insert. And this time we'll insert 2. And we're going to end up here. And root is not none, so we're going to call the recursive function again, passing in the root and our value 2. And this time we'll end up here with our node being root and our value being 2. And our value is less than our root which is 20, so 2 is less than 20, but this time our left node of our root is not none, it's 1. So now we need to call the recursive function again, this time passing in our 2 and our left node, which is 1. So we end up back up here with our value being 2 and our node being our left node now, which is 1. So now 2 is not less than 1. 2 is actually greater than 1. So that's going to bring us here. 2 is greater than 1. Our left node is 1. And this node's right node is none, so we'll just add our 2 there. So here, we're just going to add our 2. And let's do another VST insert. And let's do 30. So now we'll end up here, our root's not none. So once again, we pass to the recursive function, our value being 30, and then our root. So we'll end up here again. Now our value is 30, and our node is our root node, which is 20. And 30 is not less than 20. 30 is greater than 20. So we'll end up here. And our right node of our root node is none right now. So we can just add this 30 here. And this would just go on and on. And our root node's right node will always contain a value that's greater than our root node. And our root node's left node will always contain a value that's less than our root node. And the same thing for these child nodes. This left node's right node will always contain a value that's greater than our left node. And this left node's left node will always contain a value that's less than our left node and it would just keep going that way. So for example, the value here would have to be less than 1, and the same for here. The value here would have to be less than 30, and the value here would have to be greater than 30. And you're going to see why this is necessary when we're actually implementing our binary search method. Now really quickly, I want to go over something that is important for you all to understand. That is that the order in which we make insertions into the binary search tree matters and it will impact the performance of our tree. Currently, if we were to try to search this tree for the node containing the value 30, we'd be able to leverage our root node as a midpoint, and we'd be able to completely avoid traversing any node to the left of our root because we know that any node to the left of our root or within this left subtree will be less than the value 20, our root value which will therefore be less than the value 30, which would leave us with the right subtree to traverse to find the value 30 without ever needing to traverse the left subtree. Now, if this is confusing to you, I suggest you watch my video on how binary search works, which you can access by clicking the link currently displayed on your screen. But continuing with my point, the reason that the order in which we make insertions into the binary search tree matters is because the order of insertion impacts the structure of the tree. So currently, with the order in which we've made our insertions, we have a balanced binary search tree. Because the height of our root's left subtree, which is 2, 1, 2, differs from the height of our root's right subtree, which is 1, only by 1. So that is, the height of our left subtree is 2, and the height of our right subtree is 1, and 2 minus 1 is 1, so the difference between our two subtrees is only 1, which makes this 
binary search tree balanced. And it's not within the scope of this series, but it is something that you will need to become familiar with as you go deeper into working with binary search trees. But continuing with my point, the reason that the order in which we make insertions into the binary search tree matters is because the order of insertion impacts the structure of the tree. So with this insertion order that we currently have, we are left with a balanced binary search tree. But if we were to change the order of insertion, we could be left with a completely different tree structure. To demonstrate that, let's insert these same values into our tree, but this time in order from smallest to largest. So we can start by just erasing this current tree structure. And we'll leave this here for your reference, but this is no longer the insertion that we're using to create our tree. So let's create our new insertion here. So we'll do bst dot insert. And this time we'll start with one. And what's going to happen is our tree is null. So one is going to become our root. So we'll just have one as our root node. And then we'll do bst dot insert and this time we'll insert two and we'll end up here and then we'll go down to our recursive and we'll pass in the value two and our root which is one and then we'll end up here our value two is greater than our root which is one and our roots right node is none so we would just add to our roots right node the value two then we'd insert again and this time we'd insert 20 and again we'd end up here insert recursive value 20 root 1 and our value 20 is greater than our root but our right node already contains a value so we would insert again this time passing our right node and our value 20 and we'd end up back at the top here and now our right node is the node and our value is 20 and our value 20 is greater than our right node, which is only two. And this node's right value is none, so we would just insert that 20 here. So we'd end up like this. And then last but not least, we'd insert our 30. And we'd do the same thing, we'd end up here, eventually leading us to adding our 30 here. Now, as you can see, this tree structure here is very similar to a linked list. That is, to find 30, we would need to traverse through every node. So we would have to go to this node's right node, this node's right node, this node's right node, and finally arrive at 30, which would make searching this structure in particular take linear or O of n time. So with this example, you can see how insertion order can have a substantial impact on the performance of our binary search tree. Now we won't be getting into it in this tutorial, but this is something that we can manage by coding our binary search tree in such a way that it is self-balancing, which would therefore make it an AVL tree or a self-balancing binary search tree. But this is out of the scope of this series. For now, it's only important that you understand that the tree structure will differ depending on the order in which we make insertions and that in turn will affect the performance of our tree. So let's move forward with adding the rest of the methods to our binary search tree class. Okay so before we add our search methods into our binary search tree class let's go back into our server file and set up our route and actually this rule should be blog post and then blog post id. So this route's going to be used to retrieve one blog post based on its ID. And we'll change this also to blog post ID. And we'll go ahead and remove this pass. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to query all of our blog posts by doing blog all. And what this is going to do is it's going to return to us a list of blog posts in ascending order. And we're going to insert those blog posts into our binary search tree. And we're going to use the search method on our binary search tree to search for and retrieve a specific blog post. And our binary search tree search and insert methods are going to be based on our blog posts ID. So if you remember nodes 
within our binary search tree have to be inserted in a particular way such that a node's left node can't be larger than the node and the node's right node must be larger than the node. And the value that we're going to use to determine this is our blog post ID. And if you remember, if we insert into our binary tree in ascending order, we're essentially going to get a tree structure similar to a list. And there are actually only a couple of ways for that particular linear tree structure to be produced. And that is if we insert nodes in ascending order and if we insert them in descending order. Because as showed in our example, when you insert nodes in order from smallest to greatest, we're just going to keep adding nodes to the previous node's right node, which will result in a list-like structure. And the same thing would happen if we insert nodes from largest to smallest. But in that case, the list-like structure would be in the other direction, but it would still be a list-like structure. So our way to solve this is we're going to attempt to create a more balanced tree structure by randomizing our inserts. So basically, we're going to take this ascending order by ID blog post list, and we're just going to shuffle it using this random module. And we need to import that random module. So let's go here and do import random. So now our blog post list will no longer be in ascending order. It'll be in a completely random order. And when we iterate through it and add it to our binary search tree, our tree structure will also be randomized. And with this random tree structure, we have a better chance of getting a balanced binary search tree, which in turn will increase the overall performance of our tree. So now we also need to import our binary search tree module. So we can go back up here and similar to our hash table, we can just do binary search tree. And we can create a binary search tree instance. And we can insert into our tree by doing for post in blog post, bst.insert. And we're actually going to insert dictionaries as our individual blog posts. So we're actually going to need to go back into our binary search tree insert method and make some changes. So we would do ID and that's going to be post.id and we need title, body, and user. So let's change this to title and same here. And once we've generated our binary search tree, we can create a post by just doing bst.search, which we have not yet implemented, but we will. And search is going to return the blog post of the past blog post ID. And the idea is for our binary search tree to be a balanced tree so that our search takes logarithmic time. And lastly, we're going to do if not post because our search method is going to return false if the blog post for the corresponding ID is not found. And if that's the case, we're going to return JSONify. Post not found. And if the post is found, we'll just return JSONify post. So let's go ahead and save this and go back into our binary search tree.py file. And here we're going to need to make changes to our insert recursive. So we're going to be changing this value to data because we're no longer inserting just a single value, we're inserting a dictionary. And when we do these comparisons, we're going to be comparing the IDs within the dictionary. So this would be changed to data ID, and this would be ID as well. So now we're comparing the past data's ID to the node's data's ID. And here, data, same for here. And also for this insert method, we're going to do the same thing. Data, data, data. So let's go ahead and see if this works. So we'll save here and we'll run our server. And then we'll go and add another request to Postman to get a single blog post based on its ID. So once you have Postman open, once again, we can go to our Flask API folder 
and hit add request. And we'll just call it git blog post and save to Flask API. Then we'll go to git blog post, then our URL, and this is just going to be blog post and an ID. So let's just do five. And let's go ahead and send this request. And we get an error, binary search tree has no attribute search because we haven't yet implemented our search method. So let's go ahead and do that before we move forward. So binary search tree. So our search method is going to be fairly similar to our insert method in that it's going to be a recursive method. So we'll define search and we'll take self and blog post ID. And let's change this. And the blog post ID that we get from the URL is going to be a string. So we're going to want to convert it into an int because when we're comparing it to the blog post ID within our data, it's going to be compared to an int. So we'll do blog post ID as an int is our new blog post ID. And then if self dot root is none, we're just going to return false because if that's the case, it means our binary search tree is empty. So of course a blog post cannot exist within it. But otherwise we're going to return self dot underscore search recursive, similar to the way we did our insert. This search recursive method is going to be a private method that belongs to our search method. And we're going to pass in the blog post ID and self dot root. So now let's add this search recursive method. It's going to take blog post ID and node. And since this is a recursive function, we need a base case. And our base case is going to be if the node passed in's left node and right node is none, then we're going to return false. And first we'll check if our blog post ID is equal to the current node's data's ID. And if that's the case, then we'll just return the current node because that means that we found our node. So if blog post ID is equal to node.data ID, then just return node.data. But if we're not so lucky, we'll need to traverse the tree. So if blog post ID is less than node.data, Then we'll check to see if the blog post ID is equal to our node's left node's data ID. So if blog post ID is equal to node.left.data ID. And if that's the case, we can just return node.left.data. But if it's not the case, we're going to return self.search recursive our blog post ID, and this time our left node. So again, this is similar to our insert. And we're going to do the same thing if blog post ID is greater than node.data ID. And if blog post ID is greater than our node data's ID, then that means we're going to search the right subtree. So if blog post ID is equal to node.write.data ID. Then we'll just return node.write.data. But if not, we'll recurse down our write subtree by passing in the blog ID and node.write node. So let's take a couple of seconds to go over what's happening here. So if we can't find our blog post ID within our binary search tree, we will reach this base case, which will just return false, meaning that we couldn't find it. And if our root node is in fact the data that we're searching for, then we'll just return that root node. But if our blog post ID is less than our root node, then we're going to traverse the left subtree 
because the right subtree will only contain values that are greater than our blog post ID. And then we check to see if the top node of our left subtree is the data that we're searching for. And if it is, we'll just return that node. But if not, we're going to recurse down that left subtree. And the same goes for if our blog post ID is greater than our root nodes data. If that's the case, then we're going to traverse our right subtree because the left subtree will only contain values that are less than our midpoint, which is our root node. So if the top node of our right subtree is the data that we're searching for, then we can just return that. But if not, we'll need to recurse down our right subtree. And that's going to be our search method. So let's go ahead and save this. And let's try running our server again. And in Postman, let's try sending our request to get blog post with ID 5 once again. And we get post not found. Hmm, so let's check our database and see if we have a blog post with the ID 5. So again, you want to open your DB browser and go to open database and then open your DB file. And let's go to blog post browse table. And we do in fact have a blog post with the ID 5. So there's something wrong with our code. So let's go back into our server.py file and let's see what's happening here. Okay, let's go into our search method and have a look. Ah, I see. So unreachable code. Because this return, we didn't add the proper indentation. So this should be here. And now let's go ahead and save. And let's run our server again. And back in Postman, let's go ahead and send the request for blog post with ID 5 again. And we get our blog post. And we get our body, our ID, our title, and our user ID. Let's try it with another blog post. Let's do 199. And we get a blog post for ID 199. And now let's try it for a blog post that we know does not exist. So we can just put in some random numbers here. And we get another error. So let's see what's happening. Let's close our server and let's go into binary search tree.py. Hmm. Sorry about that. So this was a pretty big oversight on my part. So we're going to remove this here and we're going to add to this portion and node.left is not none. And we'll do the same thing here, but we'll do if node.right is not none. And then we need to return false here. So what was happening was we were trying to compare the blog post ID to node.data of a left node or a right node, which was actually equal to none. So there was no way to access the data of none. So now let's save this and run our server again. And in Postman, we can try to send a request to retrieve this blog post with this random ID that we know doesn't exist once again. And this time we'll get post not found. And if we put an ID that does exist, let's say 200, we'll get the blog post. And let's take this a step further and just put a really random long number and send it and we get post not found. And now we've created our route to retrieve a blog post for a particular blog ID. And we've made use of our binary search tree to search for and retrieve that particular blog post. And that's going to be it for this video. In this video, we've implemented our own binary search tree. And we also learned how insertion order impacts the structure of our trees, as well as how our binary search performance is impacted by the overall tree structure. In the next video, we'll add functionality to the rest of our routes by making use of stacks and queues.